Hello, I'm Arlene Harrison. My guest today is Catherine Crosby, who was with us last week talking about the special relationship she had with her legendary husband, Bing Crosby. And today we're going to talk more about the magic of Bing Crosby and also about Catherine Crosby's life as she goes on very successfully, very busy without Bing. We'll meet Catherine Crosby right after these messages, so please stay right there. I'm Arlene Herson, and my guest is Catherine Crosby. We're here at Scanticon in Princeton. And uh, thank you again. This is the second week in a row <laughs> that you're here. We were talking last week about your life with Bing Crosby. And uh, 20 years of marriage, four years before that, you actually wrote two books, actually, yes. <laughs> about your life with Bing. As a matter of fact, I have one of the books here, Great. My Life with Bing. But now there's a life without Bing. And I'm just curious, you know, can't, Bing is a hard act to follow. Impossible. Uh, okay, but how are you doing? I'm doing fine. Thanks to a lot of women around the country and, and I guess the women's movement, I, I feel so comfortable uh, and not married. It's great fun to uh, keep up with the kids, but I have a life that's very busy. I'm a businesswoman too. And of course, in the last mm, two years, my life has been centered around the Crosby Golf Tournament. I became involved with that uh, right after Bing died. Sent Nathaniel to represent us, but he was into college, and so sooner or later the responsibilities of the invitations and things fell on my shoulders. And then uh, we are continuing that tradition, but going back to the original premise of the Crosby, we, you know, in 1937, Bing started a little gathering to help some friends of his who were stranded on the west coast. The pros had had a tournament canceled and they didn't have enough money to get back home, back to the east where their wives and families were waiting. Uh, Jackie Burke, a friend of ours from Texas, said, I slept in the back of my station wagon for so many months, I can't tell you. But Bing got some friends together. He got some celebrities, his pals from Hollywood. He got some corporate sponsors, also his pals from the Los Angeles, San Diego area, who would foot the bill as they always do. And they played some golf, and the charity that they helped was, at that time, the pros. It was the amateur pro. And they had such a good time, and there was even uh, some money left over after the clam bake. And that went to charity. And that's the premise that probably was dearest to Bing's life. And it was part of our life when we were married, a very vital part of our life. And I think that and the adventures I'm having with that uh, are what I do most now. Okay, I know that's what you're involved in, and we are going to talk more about it. As a matter of fact, uh, we're going to be joined uh, later in the show by Peter Hustis, who is a publisher of Inc. Magazine, and talk about the sponsorships and the special involvements. But before that, that's part of your life. When Bing died. I'm just, uh, because your life really has changed a great deal. There was a quote in People magazine um, after Bing died. I'd like to read that, sure. that quote and uh, get your reaction. But you said, quote, I'm trying to keep my head above water, but you get to think that in India they had a good idea when the, with the widow just throwing herself on the funeral pyre. It would have been simpler that way. Mm. Now, how were you feeling to have said something like that? Oh, I was feeling... They tell me that every wife who's widowed feels this way, abandoned. I mean, how dare he go off and leave me? Oh, I think the way Bing died was, was triumphant because he played 18 holes of golf with his friends in Madrid and he won $10. <sighs> And then he died. Yeah, ironic that he died playing golf. Not ironic at all, quite fitting. In fact, he would have been hard pressed not to go playing golf, but the joy of not having to have him in the hospital, not having to suffer for a long time. He'd done enough of that, you know, and that was a triumph. But that was only part of me that said, oh, thank God he didn't suffer. 
Uh, thank God it was instantaneous. Thank God he was playing golf, which he loved so much. And thank God he won the money. That was the strangest thing I had to find out from the ambassador, you know, when he called to tell me that Bing had died in Spain. I said, uh, he was playing golf, yes. Who won the money? It, and I know the ambassador thought I was crazy, but it was very important to Bing to win, mm -hmm. and he won. Where were you when, you when you heard the news? I was in San Francisco. At home? Yes, yes. And uh, the support that I received then. You know, in West Columbia, Texas, when a tragedy of this nature happens, all the neighbors come in and they bring food. And I suppose the press had always been very close to Bing and my life. And uh, they all came and we had coffee on the back terrace. And Nathaniel went out with me and someone took pictures of us holding hands under the table. He was a very great support to me then. And later in the afternoon, I took him back to the golf course because he needed to play golf. And so he did. But after that, I felt terribly alone and terribly abandoned. You see, it was the proper time for my children to go out on their own. There's a time when you must release your children to live their lives because it is their life. And I knew that I'd not only lost Bing, I'd lost that which had involved me for 20 years. So it was a, a, a feeling of total bereavement. I think every widow understands that. You know? True. But then you get on with it. Uh, yes, okay, but in getting on with it, I kind of wonder, it's a personal question. Sure. But um, as we mentioned, Bing is a tough act to follow. Are you dating? No. You? <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's very funny. I thought... I was brave enough to handle a lot of things, and I must say, I have such admiration for people who've been divorced and remarry and get assorted groups of children together and somehow make citizens of them and preserve their sanity at the same time. Uh, I have great admiration for those people because I met some attractive people, and yet I've, I've done that. I've done that. I have great uh, enthusiasm for life. And a lot of things that I did regretfully and sometimes sulkily give up when Bing and I were together. I mean, I didn't get to do the Broadway play. I didn't get to do a lot of things that I wanted to do. You did do, I, I don't want to, but when you mentioned a Broadway play, you, you appeared several years ago in same time next year. Yes. I saw you in that, as a matter of fact. Did and you? you were wonderful. Thank you. But if Bing were alive, I wonder if he would have approved of the role. You played a divorced, uh, not a divorced, a woman, a married woman, having an affair. Could you have played that role if Bing was still alive? Bing read that script, and he just got to the first scene, and he threw the script across the room. Uh, but if you read on, it is a terribly moral play. And the end scene, where they've known each other for 50 years, they're really best friends. Uh, the stars of the play are the respective mates, and they get to share things that most people tell only to their analysts, because they're really concerned about each other. And the play was right, and it was wonderful for me at the last, because it allowed, it allowed me to work through uh, my sorrow and my anguish. and. Uh, to come to realize that the last scene was quite correct. She felt comfortable in her marriage, comfortable when, in her life. When you talk about the last scene, for those who did not see Same Time next year, I think we're kind of leaving them in the, in, in the darkness, but it was essentially about a woman who had an ongoing affair with somebody else who was married to somebody else. Met a man once a year, and what they really did was bring each other. Uh, every five years the scenes were written, I think. And so it, it involved a lot of years. But the feeling of being comfortable is, uh, is rather lovely. It is a lovely thing without the tearing passions of early, early love. Dolores Hope said to me the first time we went to Florence, and I tried to call Bing, and some operator said, they're gone for the weekend. And I went into, you know, orbit, and Dolores said, ah, oh, yes, I remember that feeling well. And, of course, Bob was never home, never mind gone for the weekend. He spent his life on the road, and Dolores raised four children alone, practically. And what wonderful 
uh, parenting they receive. Yeah. Yes, true. Okay, and and we, but you're spending a lot of time alone now. We're going to take a break. Uh, right. Then we're going to come back and talk some more. Thank you. We're speaking with Catherine Crosby. We'll be right back after these messages. So please stay right there. We're back. I'm Arlene Herson, and I'm speaking with Catherine Crosby. Uh, speaking about your role in same time next year, um, which was the most recent thing I saw you in, which was several years ago, but uh, you are an accomplished actress. You were an actress before marrying Bing. Yes. You are an actress now. Are you still pursuing actively an acting career? Yes, but life comes down to a, a number of rather difficult choices, and you do what has to be done at the time. Uh, early on, I was promised a Broadway play and asked to come to Broadway, and I had to get Harry into kindergarten. Uh, just this year, uh, Bill Ball, who was director of ACT at the American Conservatory Theatre, said, we really now have a season that's just right for you. We'll put you in every play, and you can be just as busy with us. And I heard myself say, Bill, I have this tournament. I have to do it. I can't be this year's star at ACT. I have to go ahead with the job at hand. The tournament, uh, yeah. the Crosby Golf Tournament that, yes. we're, that we're going to talk about in the next segment. but. Um, because you are a good actress, Thank and you. I personally would like to see you on the stage Thank you. Uh, in your personal life again. Um, after Bing died, you were criticized for having put a lot of his personal effects up for auction. The family said, gee, they would have liked to have had some. Why did you do that? Everybody got everything they wanted. We had six houses, and we closed three warehouses and we close the office. And as, as happens in a lot of real estate sales, they just want the walls. And all of these desks and things arrived at uh, my home in Hillsboro. Uh, we had given to Bing's fans uh, personal items because they wanted them. It's very strange to me, but uh, a, name, a lady named Renee Chester came all the way from England uh, and a friend, Priscilla Koenig, had her into my house and she sat in the place where Bing sat to read his newspaper in the morning and the evening and she said, I'm here. I'm really where he was. Could I have something of his? And I said, well, what, what about a shirt? And she, oh, if she could have that, it was, you know, they... They really asked for things, and uh, I had lived with Bing. It seemed rather fair for me to share things that he had touched, or that he had used, uh, even awards he had given. Uh, so that's why I did it. Uh, not because I would have done it, but because his friends uh, wanted very much for me to do that. There's a, a man in Colorado Springs who has a pair of Bing's golf shoes framed on, and on the wall behind his bar. And they tell me it's the most important thing in his life. He drove 90 miles to see me when I was there for 10 minutes just to thank me for that. Now, it, it seemed an appropriate thing to do at the time. I agree. In reading about it, when it happened, uh, it was a few years ago, and reading in, in the conflicting reports, that's why I wanted you to say what you felt. You I know felt what's cute? You, because you were going to write a book, Arlene, and I've written a couple. Uh, my daughter called me during that article and said, Mother, she's doing a hatchet job. Because the questions she asked were, isn't your mother terribly cold? Isn't she terribly hard? Uh, isn't she in trouble financially? And Mary Frances said, no, no, and no to all the, all the above. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But the, the article was written before the reporter ever talked with me. And I suppose, once again, that makes news. See, I have lived a fairy tale life. And it's nice. Doesn't mean it's easy, but it's nice. And miracles have happened all through my life. Uh, the most recent this morning. Can you tell us about that? Yes, in the next segment. Oh, yes, because the because <laughs> well, I know the miracle you're going to talk about, you're referring to something uh, in connection with the Crosby Golf Tournament, which we are going to talk does about. Does the name First uh, Fidelity Bank mean yes, anything to okay. you? Okay. Actually, we, we, we are going to talk about that, and I think that's terrific. Two books. Um, as I had mentioned, this really big one, um, My Life 
with Bing mm -hmm. only covers the first 12 years of the marriage. 12 more coming up any time I get back to so the typewriter. So there's a third book. The first one was called Bing and Other Things. Yes. Um, and so there is a third book. Oh, sure. On, um, on life with Bing. I tell you, it's real. <laughs> It, it's had, uh, obviously, many highs and some lows, as all lives do. But uh, for you, what was the highest? Meeting him. Meeting him? Yes. And it just got better from there. And three children. We, we, we had just mentioned because they They're all right. I'll let you know in 40 years if they're okay. <laughs> so far, okay. so far, they're good citizens. And they're positive and contributing citizens. Would you like to marry again? No. Why? I don't want to. I mean, how can you ask? I don't know. I don't know why, but I don't want to remarry. <laughs> I've had the best marriage I can imagine to the best man I could have ever dreamed of. And I have a lot to keep me busy. I'm not bored. But, you know, maybe you don't have to get married, because everybody doesn't have to be married, but we talked about dating. You are still young, very beautiful. Our life is not you know, is more enhanced when we share it with other people. There's a lovely what? thing. Uh, a friend of mine said after her second divorce and somebody asked her the same question, she said, I've done my time. <laughs> but that's a negative. Now, I'm Arlene, don't, don't be a marriage <laughs> broker. Let's get on to the next segment, okay? <laughs> okay. Okay, actually, we are going to talk to the neg uh, We're going to, in, in, uh, as we keep referring to, we're going to talk about the Crosby Tournament, uh, which has become a major part of your life. And... Um, and part of your life with Bing that continues, because part of it will always continue, but this is a more tangible part. We're going to come back. When we come back, we're going to be joined by Peter Hustis, um, and we're going to explain his involvement with you. We're going to come back, and then we're going to talk about that. Lovely. Them. We're speaking with Catherine Crosby. We'll be right back after these messages, so please don't go away. We're back. I'm speaking with Catherine Crosby, and we're joined now by Peter Hustis, who is the publisher of Inc. Magazine. Peter, I'm glad that you can join us, and uh, actually I'm going to ask you a little bit more about Inc. Magazine, but first, because you're here because your involvement in the Crosby, right. the Crosby, <clears throat> the golf tournament, and uh, we've been uh, setting this up through the whole show. Yes. So, Catherine, please tell us, what is the Crosby? The Crosby is basically a series of miracles. When we felt we had to leave Pebble Beach, the outcry all the way across America was so incredible that I thought the celebration has to go on. And we looked back at the beginning and we set it up. Uh, certain things are new. Uh, corporate sponsorship, which has always been very strong in the Crosby, is now acknowledged. Uh, we're entering corporate teams. We have celebrity teams playing and the corporations are part of this. Uh, we hope to get, what, 20, 15 uh, celebrities expected to get seven. We have 200. So what we need to do is explain to our friends in corporate America what advantages they can achieve by being part of the Crosby. We have had the most incredible response already, and now in New Jersey, just this morning, small miracles, we met Mr. William F. Faherty of the First Fidelity Bank, and we met over breakfast, and he said, I'd like to get the guys in New York and together, uh, like 50 heavy hitters. That would mean another 50 sponsors. That would mean another million dollars of the purse, which goes 100% to charity. And not only just to my charity or yours, but the charity chosen by the corporate sponsor. Now, that's a very hefty sum, $20,000, and I thought it was a lot. And Bing always was good for people who, who could just buy one record, as well as those who could buy a series of albums. And Peter Hustis of Inc. Magazine brought in a wonderful idea. Okay, which we want to talk about, as a matter of fact, because it's not j just a kind of when we talk about the sponsors, the corporate, sponsors, the corporate sponsorships are generally $20,000. That's right. You mentioned the move from Pebble Beach, and before we go into that, because in the past, all of these years since 1937... No, the it was from 1937 to 1942 in Rancho Santa Fe, near San ah, Diego. Okay. It stopped and for the war, and then after the war, because they had great need in the Pebble Beach area, the sardines had left. You remember Tortilla Flat in Cannery Row? Steinbeck. Well, that's what happened. Uh -huh. After that, the sardines left, and the town was in trouble. And mm. so Bing uh, started the tournament there, and uh, started it in a, 
a season that is kindly known as monsoon season. Uh, they had what they call Crosby weather, but you look at the history. It always rained in February, the last of January, the first of February. At Bermuda Run Country Club in North Carolina, we ask several questions. First, when is the perfect week of the year? First week in June. When is the Bermuda grass perfect on the golf course? First week in June. So the fifth is a practice round. The sixth, seventh, and eighth of June are the days of the tournament. And everybody's going to have a good time. Okay, important because there are, and everybody can participate as a, as a sponsor, as a corporate sponsor, as Peter is doing. This is the first year that you're doing it on your own. It's not in Pebble Beach. No. It's here. It's Catherine Crosby with the help of, Pete, of people like Peter Hustis. Exactly. Peter, please, um, first tell us what you, um, I know that you're the publisher of Inc. Magazine and, and how you, you really got involved because of your involvement with Inc. Magazine. First tell us a little bit about Inc. Magazine and how you became a corporate sponsor. Well, Inc. was founded in, uh, started publishing in 1979. It was founded by a man by the name of Bernard Goldhirsch uh, from Boston, who uh, was an avid sailor and had founded a publication called Sail Magazine. And as he was growing his business, uh, he recognized, uh, and also through a group of friends from the Young Presidents Organization, that they had no vehicle that really spoke to them about how to grow a business. And so consequently, he got the idea of starting a publication that would serve the needs of people who owned their own businesses that wished to grow them. And there started uh, the name from the word incubator, Inc. Magazine. And today, after seven short years, has grown to the fourth largest business publication in the United States. And uh, we serve the informational needs of people who own their own companies uh, and help them grow them. And that's Inc. Magazine. So I was approached um, by a person that I had, uh, had given a speech for, for a group of women in business, and said, how would you like to play in the Crosby Tournament? and uh, golf is my love, and I said, that would be wonderful. And I received the information, and the information I received called for uh, an entrance fee of $20,000. And I explained to this person that uh, in my business judgment, I would have a difficult time rationalizing uh, that type of, of expenditure, and was told not to worry. What happened was six women who own their own businesses sponsored me to play in the Crosby Tournament. And from that, we built an idea. And the idea was that rather than have a tournament that was exclusively for big business, for corporate America, there would be an opportunity to go out and sell sponsorships at a far more reasonable price at, say, $2,500. And then for each eight $2,500 sponsorships that were sold, one person would be selected out of the eight to play in the tournament. The remainder, however, would still be invited to Bermuda Run sure. in that first week in June to attend an opening gala cocktail party, to attend the, the uh, internationally known Crosby Clam Bake that will feature people such as Bob Hope and Flip Wilson and others, and also to participate uh, as spectators in the three days of the tournament where they'll have an opportunity to associate with uh, the stars and government people and people from corporate okay, for America. For the people out there, because we're running out of time mm -hmm. very quickly. The uh, number that's important, Darlene, is 1-800-522-BING. Right. Uh -huh. Wonderful number for those people who do want to participate. I think it's wonderful that, that you're going to participate and that you're sponsored by six women who own their own businesses. Spectacular. It's good to have the women behind you. Uh, Catherine, I know that this is an exciting time for you, too, because this is the first year that you're really uh, behind this um, on your own. And um, do you play golf? Are you going to yes, play? Yes, of course. <gasps> okay. Of course. <laughs> it's going to be the most exciting golfing adventure. And I guess the reason we got 200 celebrities to accept is they know that whatever their game is, it really counts. And um, it is at Bermuda Run. We didn't mention where that is. That's in Just North Carolina. Just outside of Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Uh -huh. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. I hope that you enjoyed getting to know Catherine Crosby again and uh, meeting Peter Eustace and learning about the Crosby tournament and that you'll join us again next week. Meantime, good night. It's been a pleasure getting to know you.